And first we'll hear from Joe Reinhardt of Industrial Louvers. I think I'll just let you start right in because I know you've got a lot of exciting things that are happening both in the future and where you are today. Thank you, Joe. Okay, obviously this mic has to come down a little bit lower here. <laughs> Can everybody hear me all right? <laughs> um, good afternoon, and uh, I really thank you uh, for inviting me to speak today, uh, as Wendy alluded to, and, and Phil too. Uh, there are a lot of exciting things happening at Industrial Louvers right now. So I do want to talk to you a little bit about our journey, how it's gone over the years, um, and some of the new things that are happening. Um, I'm going to give you a brief introduction of, of what we do and who we are, but I also want to, I know we introduced ourselves at the beginning, but kind of wanted to reintroduce uh, Connie Tyson, who is uh, my manager of HR, and we all know how important HR is, is to business today. And then Lisa Britton, who's the director of sales and marketing um, and our sustainability champion. So I'm going to talk a little bit about sustainability and what that means for our business as well. So. Um, obviously, uh, Industrial Louvers is a custom manufacturer of architectural metal products. Um, our, our niche is very specialized and focused on serving our customers' needs and wants. Um, we've developed a set of core values as well that we operate our business and the expectations of our employees are, are all part of that core value um, and, and integral to how we do business. We do market and sell our product nationally through um, a group of independent sales representatives. Um, our product offering uh, has changed quite a bit over the years. Um, initially, as the name suggests, industrial louvers, uh, we were focused almost entirely on industrial louvers, um, which is an air ventilation product, um, and, and we work in uh, commercial construction. Um, it's evolved over the years, so we added equipment screens and de decorative grills um, as we progressed through the 70s and 80s, and those, those grills have gotten a lot more elaborate um, than what they initially were. Uh, and then within the last 20 years or so, we started doing some sunshades and a lot more custom architectural type of metal products. So, so um, I'm going to kind of launch right into our journey. Um, like I said, uh, we started the company back in, in 1971. Actually, it was uh, started by my dad, James Steriker, and a small group of investors. Uh, we spun off of an industrial division of a company called Louver Manufacturing, and they had decided they wanted to move their headquarters to Little Rock, Arkansas, and, and the industrial division was a very small component, so they were happy to, to send that off, and, and my dad was in a fortunate position to be able to acquire that, that business. He then purchased the original building there in Delano um, in December of 1971 from a company called Air Control Products. Um, and like I said, some of the, these pictures were just kind of interesting to, to dig up. Obviously, as you can see, it was pretty rural. Um, that, my understanding is that was the very first building in the industrial park. Um, so, and the offices there is very much uh, 70s decor. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I was going to say, many of you might remember him, rock and roll Buck Zumhoff. Uh, he worked for Industrial Louvers back in the early 70s as our truck driver in our creating department until he launched his, his uh, wrestling career. Um, you know, he could pick up and move louvers and crates that nobody else could do. It takes two people to do what he did back in those days. You know, unfortunately, he's now famous for some other things that uh, <laughs> we won't talk about. <laughs> Uh, over the, uh, the course of our, our journey, uh, we've gone through a number of uh, expansions, um, some sm very, very small, others much larger. Um, the original building, as I said, was about 30,000 square feet, and it's about 63,000 square feet today under one roof. Um, Back in 1984, um, well, as you can see there, in 83, we did about a 15,000 square foot addition to house a new paint line. So the company called Industrial Finishing was started in 1984 um, for the purposes of handling industrial louvers painting needs. Um, it's all an architectural type of, of coating um, and also to, um, to provide some additional opportunities as we uh, grew and developed new products in the market and maybe to be able to also help do painting for other uh, compatible uh, products. 
So um, the only thing I, I do kind of hate to admit, admit a little bit is that our existing offices have not undergone any major renovations, a little bit of paint, a little bit of carpet here and there. Uh, so that's somewhat much the same as the original building. Um, however, we have been working really hard this last year in developing some new plans for, for a very major expansion, looking at about 40,000 square feet for a new paint line facility, uh, as well as expanding our offices by 4,000 square feet and, and renovating those offices as well. So we will be bringing those up to new standards. <laughs> Very excited about that. Uh, and, and like I said, and some of that we probably couldn't have done without some of the help from the, the uh, chamber and the uh, economic development community. Uh, Duane was very helpful in, in kind of walking us through the procedure and obtaining a grant uh, for jobs creation and, and everything else. So we're very excited about all of that as, part, as we work on those projects. We've gone through three major leadership changes um, through the history of the business. Like I said, my, my dad, Jim Steriker, uh, from 71 to 1988, he's uh, still with us, uh, 90 years old. Um, I pick him up one or two mornings a week, bring him out to the office. He loves walking around the shop, seeing what's going on, asking questions, <laughs> and everything else. So. Um, Barry Eklund was the vice president of sales and marketing at the time, and uh, he, so he took over the role of president until he retired in 99. Um, and then I uh, start, actually started with the company back in 1982. Uh, started as a drafter on, on the board. It, it wasn't AutoCAD back in those days. <laughs> um, but I, I did that, then worked in estimating project management, I eventually moved into a, a marketing role. Uh, I was, developed our very first website, uh, and then uh, in 1999 uh, took over the role as president of the company. I do have a succession plan um, to transition to a third generation. I have a son in the business, Brett, uh, who uh, works in a capacity of, of our internal business operations, directing our drafting department and project managers. Uh, he too kind of started in an entry position following much the same path as I did, um, and it's been with me now for 12 years, so I, I feel like I'm gonna be able to leave the business in good hands. <laughs> but that's not gonna happen for a few years yet. <laughs> Um, some things that I, I think we're kind of proud of that have happened. Um, back in 2011, uh, my sister and I actually acquired um, our dad's stock in the business. And uh, in 2012, we were then certified as a woman business enterprise. Uh, we were certified by the National uh, Women Business Owners Corporation. Uh, in 2014, that same uh, organization recognized me at their annual meeting um, with their Gold Eclipse Award for the best company culture in manufacturing. Also in 2014, I was nominated and received a bronze award um, from the Twin City Business Magazine for CEO of the Year in Manufacturing. Um, then our most recent accomplishment and exciting news is that we uh, were awarded the, the Just Label, um, and Industrial Louvers has the distinction of being the first U.S. manufacturer to be given the Just Label. So what is the Just Label, right? <laughs> most of you guys probably don't have a clue what that is. Um, participation in the Just Program is an opportunity for organizations to demonstrate their leadership in many areas of corporate social responsibility. It's awarded by the International Living Futures Institute, and the program is, has justice and equity indicators, uh, including the treatment of employees, diversity and inclusion, purchasing and local sourcing, um, worker benefits, workplace safety, and community stewardship. So as we went through the process, there were a couple of nice surprises. Um, and one, uh, we scored very well receiving three stars in ethnic diversity. And you think here in Wright County, County, we felt that that was a pretty good accomplishment to be able to do that. Um, one of the challenges was gender diversity. Being a woman-owned business, 50% um, of my management team are female, and we have a lot of women you know, throughout the office and doing a lot of different functions. But um, we're compared against a lot of service organizations, architectural firms, other things where the gender um, ratio is 50-50. And in manufacturing, um, the Sheet Metal Workers Union reports that only 1.56% of available manufacturers are women. 
Um, industrial louvers actually outperforms that, um, and we were, have nearly 10% in our factory, but we didn't meet the qualifications for the full three stars. <laughs> so. Um, some long-term goals. Like I said, we, a lot of exciting things doing with our, our expansion that we're working on. Our plan is to double um, in size by the year 2025. Uh, we all recognize how hard it is to, to find and retain quality employees today. So we're developing programs to partnership, partner with uh, local schools, the tech schools, um, for curriculum and skills. Uh, we need to create internships and a very uh, structured training program for our employees. Um, we also want to be a leader in sustainability uh, and be good stewards for our environment. So we are active in the U.S. Green Build uh, Council and the Minnesota chapter of the U.S. GBC. We have um, accredited professionals in LEAD, the, the leadership in energy and uh, and environmental design, and we provide training for our staff, for our sales representatives, and the industry related to the green building. We're also members in the um, International Living Futures Institute and are participating in what's known as the Living Product 50, and I'll explain that in a, in a minute. Uh, and we're an active sponsor of the Health Product Declaration Collab Collaborative as well. Um, through sponsorships, leadership roles, and, and volunteerism. So sustainability, a lot of people have maybe a lot of different ideas or thoughts about what is sustainability. And I think this, this slide uh, gives a pretty good definition of what we believe it to be. Um, sustainable development is a development that, need, that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And one of the things that I, I know I've learned, and I think as a company we've learned um, throughout the course of our journey, is that our employees, as well as our, our customers, are all very interested in a, su a sustainable future and, and what can we do to, to maintain or improve our in current environments. So as I mentioned, we were invited to participate in the, by the Living Futures Institute to participate in the LP50, which is a collaboration of the world's leading manufacturers working to create and, and build a demand for living products. And so we accepted that challenge and uh, have started a journey uh, moving on to that. Uh, he said that there's a whole program and Lisa is very, very well versed in it. And I, I said, I'm just scratching the surface on it as I'm educating myself in the, the last year or so. But uh, there are seven parts to the, uh, the living product or they, they refer to them as petals. Um, it's water, energy, health and happiness, the materials, equity and beauty. <laughs> Um, and, and to do all of that, you, you begin with a life cycle analysis, uh, looking at the products from cradle to grave and, and all the inputs and everything that goes into that. So complete transparency is, is really in required to know what's going into it, what are you putting back out into the environment, um, and, and then as well as some hand printing that can be shown through some volunteerism and community involvement. Um, our Just label as well as an HPD Declare label uh, are part of this program. So like I said, we accepted the challenge and we are moving on and, and working on developing our own living product um, label for our sunshades to begin with. Um, so this sample of an LP uh, label does show how the product and the company performs in a lot of various categories. Uh, the just is part of that as well as you know, the inputs and the outputs um, and then declaring the, the ingredients. And you know, why shouldn't we demand the same information um, from the materials that we, we buy as from the food that we eat? You know, what's going into our product? Sometimes you really don't necessarily or understand what that is. You, this is kind of a funny uh, slide, I guess, uh, because ingredient reporting can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, and you look at a Twinkie, I mean, it can be cake and cream. Otherwise, you can go into the, you know, you got some wheat and some eggs and flour and sugar, <laughs> yeah, whatever. But, but a true um, Declare label is going to list out all the different chemicals and everything else that goes into it. Uh, so that, the HPD Declare label definitely provides some consistency in how that reporting is done. 
So, uh, you know, again, it's the highest level of reporting and the transparency that goes in. It uh, identifies any red list materials. And, and for those that may not know or understand what a red list material is, that would be the really harmful things, carcinogens and things that are really bad for us. Um, with our new expansion, one of, one of our goals is to remove any and all red list uh, ingredients in our process. Uh, in our existing one, we unfortunately are, have to use a chrome type of pretreatment for our paint, but we've been working really closely with our vendors and doing a lot of testing, and, and we're very close to being able to eliminate the chrome out of the process. So that, that's part of the whole design of the new paint line is we will, not have, to, we will have something better <laughs> to use than that. Um, so we did submit, actually we've submitted our application for our de declare label just uh, earlier this month and we are expecting to receive it very, very shortly. Um, so really that's it. In closing, I'd kind of like to just make a comment about what has made us successful in the past um, doesn't always make us successful in the future. And I think business leaders today really need to listen to our younger people, our newer employees who may challenge our thinking and our assumptions and about some of the rules of the game. You hear a lot of negative comments about the millennials, but I think we've really, we've worked with a lot of millennials through some of our internships, and it's been really fun and really exciting about what they bring to the table. So, uh, personally, I really appreciate all the support I've gotten from the community and the city of Delano. I said uh, we couldn't have done what we've done throughout the years. It's been a pleasure growing alongside of this community, and we look forward to our future growth. Uh, my contact information is up there, our website. Uh, if you, you know, want to learn more about what industrial is doing, what opportunities we have, and, and what's going on, we certainly would welcome that. Thank you. I didn't know if we wanted any questions, have time for some questions or anything, if anybody had anything. Uh, our competition is all national. Um, one of our biggest competitors, uh, their headquarters are in New Jersey, but they actually do their manufacturing out of Mexico. So they're bringing in a product uh, from outside the country. We have others in, that are in the mid to southern states of the United States as well. So I think so. Yeah, we'll get that. <laughs> so. Anything else? Yes. I hear a lot about you know, shrinking industrial um, businesses in Minnesota. And you guys are look like you know slated to double in size. So what do you what do you credit that to? Or what do you see uh, areas that expand to other companies? Well, there, there's obviously still a lot of growth in the commercial construction uh, market, so so that that's driving a, a lot of it. Uh, the sustainability, um, I think, piece is is a big opportunity for us to to grow our business. Uh, many of the architectural firms that we're talking to and dealing with, uh, they are starting to demand uh, more of the uh, the HPD, the declare labels, and the sustainability criteria. So we just feel that there's a lot of opportunity right now. Thank you.